Hey guys, what's going on? Sadiq. Welcome to Experiences with Sadiq. Experiences with Sadiq is about all things real estate. A show where communication is key, advocating for the people's bliss, and knowledge is inspiring. Thank you for watching. Enjoy the show. And oh yeah, don't forget to follow me on all my social media platforms. Whether you're buying or selling the home, I'm that guy. Let's go! Hey guys, what's going on? It's Sadiq. Welcome to Experiences with Sadiq. So today I have two guests, Dr. Jacket Alash, Adelijah, and also Richard Norris. Listen, Jacket, I apologize for pronouncing your last name wrong. I apologize for that. <laughs> um, she's a doctor in the dental field, and Richard Norris is a vice principal for 360 School, if I'm correct, Richard? Yep, 360 High School. 360 High School. Please introduce yourself, doctor, and please inter introduce yourself, Mr. Norris, and explain what you guys do in your field. So uh, my name is Joe K. Alesha Deleja, and um, I am a dentist, a general dentist. I work in Upper Rhode Island, um, and what I do is I basically treat dental disease and prevent dental disease in my patients. I work in a community health center, so I mostly treat underserved patients um, in a rural area. Nice. And I'm Rich Norris. I'm the assistant principal here at 360 High School in Providence. Uh, a lot of my work is focused on uh, restorative justice, trying to find the gaps that we have in our schools and just trying to work with students in the community to sort of um, fill in our gaps and just sort of build up students so that they leave us, stay in a position to succeed and improve their community. Nice. Well, welcome to the show, guys. So, Experiences with Sadiq, we're taking a different turn on this platform today. How do you guys feel Gina Romano is doing? Do you guys feel like this is something that is being handled on a correct scale in this industry and in the community? Let me know your thoughts. So, the dental industry um, is basically shut down in a lot of ways. Like, the normal work that we do... Um, most offices are being asked to be closed, um, no elective procedures. So I go in about three times a week just to see dental emergencies. So people who are in pain, swelling, um, you know, infection, then I go in and do emergency treatment on those patients. But that's really it. So any routine cleaning, fillings, um, you know, whitening, any cosmetic things, we're just not doing that right now. So our industry as a whole is suffering, but I think it does make a lot a, lot, a lot of sense because, you know, we're trying to reduce the spread of this infectious disease that, you know, we just don't know that much about. Um, and since we're working in people's mouths and there's no way to, you know, create a barrier for that, um, I think it does make a lot of sense. And the precautions that we're all taking, taking do make sense. Um, it is tough, but it's nice to know that there are still places available if you do have a dental emergency and that's what I go in and do. Um, so yeah, I think in terms of how the state is handling things, I think they're doing the best they can with the information that they have. It's like, okay to say, oh, someone's going overboard or doing too much, but if it was the reverse and people weren't doing enough, I think people would be complaining more. So I think only time will tell, you know, what really needs to be done or what really should happen. But I think right now everyone's kind of play, playing it better safe than sorry. I think similarly to I agree, I think with my industry, I mean, I'm sitting in the uh, most, I'm barely in my office anymore. So my school is sort of like my life. I'm, I'm there usually every day from about six to probably 6.30 or seven. So it's been a huge, and just having the building empty and not being around your kids. So it's been a huge impact, I think, emotionally. So it creeps me out. I'm here today, as a matter of fact, because at least once or twice a week I come in. So for students who need to exchange uh, technology or thing like that, but it's, it's creepy to have a whole school and just quiet, lights it off. Um, I, uh, overall, as an assessment of what COVID is for me, I just think it's an opportunity. I'm always looking for opportunities, even in the greatest tragedies. 
I think economically, the impact is huge. Most of our students and their families uh, will suffer from this and we're doing the best as we can as a school to provide any type of support that, that these families need. Um, I think social emotionally, a lot of kids are reporting, or families are calling and reporting, hey, my, my child's just been feeling down. You know, just the loss of that human connection has been huge. And especially on our younger grades, we're seeing the most reporting of social emotional um, concerns that we have to address daily. But but even in, in all of this, do I still see it as an, uh, as an opportunity for us to assess ourselves as a society, as a school system, as uh, just over as a system, like how are we doing with the things that we need to do daily to be successful? So, um, and for the governor handling, I, I think she got the right person for the job. If I'm not mistaken, Dr. Alexander's specialty is infectious disease, if I'm not mistaken. So I, I, I think Dr. Uh, Nicole Alexander has handled this correctly. I think they're taking the right precautions that they need to take. You know, people are always critical of government is either you do, if you don't do it, people complain if you do. So people are going to complain no matter what. But like Dr. Lesh said, I think they're taking the right precautions. No, I really, I really think that uh, what they're doing right now in our economic state, the economic state that we're in right now, uh, how they're going about, you know, trying to make sure people are staying protected and all this other crazy stuff. I think they're taking the right approach. I really feel like Gina Romano is really, really playing an effective role as well as uh, the doctor that she has right beside her as well, um, especially with this whole social distancing and everything like that. And them just constantly, constantly reiterating how sh people should practice social distancing. I think they're doing a really, really great job in regards to that. Um, from your standpoint, uh, Dr. Juckett, what do you feel when you go in and you treat all these patients and things like that? What type of, do you guys, what type of precautionary steps do you guys advise a lot of your clients, you know, um, during this whole pandemic? For my office, what we're doing is we're triaging people over the phone, making sure that what they have is really a dental emergency because we want people to come in for dental emergencies. We don't want people to go to the emergency room where they're already overwhelmed. We want them to come to us, but we want to make sure it really is a dental emergency. So once we triage them over the phone, we have them come into the office. We only see one patient at a time to reduce the spread. When you get to the office, you have to sanitize your hands and put on a mask. Um, we give a patient a pen to fill out their paperwork and they get to keep that pen. We're not like spreading things back and forth. Um, once we get the patient in, we take their temperature um, just to make sure they're not feverish. We ask them questions, you know, like, are you having a cough? Are you feeling sick? Once they say no to all those questions, then um, I go in and assess what they need. And even when I go in and my assistant goes in, we have on all the proper protective equipment, um, you know, the N95 mask, a mask, a face shield, a bonnet on top of my head, a gown. Um, so it gets really hot treating the patient. The whole, the whole nine we're, yards. <laughs> like, yeah. We're really like all, like everything, it's like hazmat suits almost, but really just to protect the patients and to protect us and our families. Um, we're making sure that we're doing everything that we need to do. And even before I start any treatment, we have them rinse with a, um, a mouth rinse that helps to reduce the viral load. Um, and then I go ahead and perform any surgeries or treatment that the person may need um, before they leave. And then before they leave, they put the mask back on and then head to their cars. Nice, and nice. She, what about you, Mr. Norris? How are you guys doing? I know, like, they're really practicing uh, distance, uh, social distance, and make sure they protect themselves. Um, what about you, uh, Richard Norris, in terms of your school? How do you guys feel with this whole uh, beta testing uh, that the students are doing at home? How's that How's that holding up so far? Well, just, just in terms of, like, in precautions here at the school and then testing all of that, once when I'm here, if a student or family comes in, they do have to have their mask and everything on. Um, even the exchanges with the Chromebooks, I have my gloves on. I throw my mask on. They're standing. They're standing behind a counter, which is approximately six or more feet. So it's it's still very creepy to be to have to interact with your family like that. It's almost sad sometimes to say, "Man, I, I love, you know I, I love you. You're my people, but stay over there." So, <laughs> yeah, it's been kind of strange. Um, as far as the testing and things at home, 
I will say I think our school is in a better position to get into distant learning because most of the students here and our staff has already been using online programs, uh, sort of blended learning model. So they have familiarity with using Chromebooks with access as our online. We have an online system called Schoology, which is where we put all our morning announcements and all those things. So we had a better preparedness in that way because the very day they had announced that we were shutting down, I mean, two days prior to that, we had already distributed Chromebooks to every student. So they already had Chromebooks at home. And I think the biggest thing now is sometimes when you take the Chromebooks off the Providence School Network, it may be a little slower depending on the kids' internet access at home. So that's why I'm here sometimes. Kids will say, well, my computer's not working or it's a little slow and they will bring it back in with we'll do exchange and all of that. But the vast majority of students are logging on every day. They're, they're doing their work. We, we just created a work tracker sheet so that if we notice you have a Chromebook and we provide a hotspot from you, but you're not turning in any work, then then we start having that conversation with parents. Uh, we also have a system called Go Garden. A lot of schools use it. It's just a way for you to check and see what a kid's doing. It's kind of like Big Brother's watching you in a way. Yeah. So, uh, like our principal, when the when this just happened, she was able to provide hotspots for students we wasn't going to wait for the district until they got it together. I will say the district's done a tremendous job in trying to be prepared, but we're all figuring out stuff throughout this. But she got kids hotspots. We personally deliver to their homes. So we're, we can see your computer screen. So you can't be watching YouTube music videos all day. Because <laughs> some kids would be like, I'm doing my work. It's like, nah, man, we see your screen. You've been watching videos all day. So I think kids and their families are, this is week six now. By week four, we started to see people settle in. Uh, some kids figure, man, we might not go back to school for the rest of the year, so I might as well start doing my work. Because they was waiting, oh, I'm going to do it when I get back to school. I'm going to do the work when I get back to school. And now it's like, nah, bro, this we're done for the year, but you still have to um, meet your obligations. Mm -hmm. Now, how, uh, what, what do you guys... Is there anything that the people right now should do to either assist you guys, to help you guys, you know, as a community? What can we do to uh, provide a helping hand? I, I don't know. I think for me, my biggest, every day I get an email from a kid or a family that says, you know, man, we don't, we don't have internet at home. Or could, do you guys still have a hotspot at home? I'm actually going to go deliver a hotspot that my principal got to a family, like if I leave here to drive into the home to deliver hotspots, because sometimes the parents are working and they're not allowing their kids to leave the house to go anywhere. I mean, a lot of parents are like, nope, you're not going nowhere. So sometimes we go and we deliver the hotspots, you know. So internet connection is one of our biggest things right now. I mean, just families will reach out in terms of food situations. That's another help I think the schools can use. And just community members either personally reaching out if you know a student and checking on them saying how you know just things like that make a difference make a video or something and say hey i'm you know we're just thinking about you but i think kids especially are not used to this type of social um, isolation they really as much as students complain about not wanting to be in school every kid i've talked to yo you think we can come back to school <laughs> so that, what those are, to Jaka? yeah those are some things Nice. Um, so I don't know that there's anything that people can do to help us. Um, I guess just a message would be to, if you are having a dental emergency, pain, swelling, um, make sure you call either your dentist that you normally go to or one of the community health centers in Rhode Island. The community health centers are open and are here to serve. Um, and then just making sure to try to avoid a dental emergency by making sure that you're brushing every day flossing um and really take trying to take care of your teeth during this time because if you're in the house and days turn into nights and monday you don't know when it's friday you might want to skip brushing your teeth but this is really not the time to need to come see us so if you can continue to keep those oral hygiene habits up by brushing and flossing every day that will go a long way nice 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 well you guys hear it folks you know this experience is with sadiq Dr. 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 Jake Alesh Adelaja and Richard Norris, Vice Principal. 
Thank you guys for joining Experiences with Sadiq. You guys know what it is, whether you're buying or selling a home. I'm your guy. Until next time on Experiences with Sadiq Live, I'll be talking to you guys soon. Thank you. Talk to you guys. Appreciate it, man. Bye. Bye, y'all. Bye, Doc. Bye. Bye. <laughs>